this tutorial, we're going to go over how to bake normal maps using um, ZBrush, Maya, uh, XNormal, and then importing them into Unity. Why do we do normal maps in the first place? It is because we get that high, uh, high range amount of detail on uh, our models without having to have an insane amount of geometry. So we can keep our geometry count uh, much lower by using a texture um, like a normal map that distorts the light um, and, and just maintains more of those more complex forms without having to have the physical geometry there to support it. So to start off, I have my high resolution model that I sculpted here inside of ZBrush. So um, it is uh, 2 million plus uh, polygons. So that ends up being a, a pretty hefty amount to bring back into Maya. So what I will do from here is uh, normally I will either decrease my subdivisions uh, so I have a much lower polygon object that I can take back into Maya and retopologize. Um, so, um, but I also need a the full high resolution model in order to bake it using X normal so I can get my texture maps. So I'm just going to export my rock and I'm going to call it uh, rock I poly ZBrush will export it. So the reason that um, I use XNormal is XNormal can handle much higher poly counts than a program like uh, 3ds Max or Maya. Um, now. Uh, you can you can bake normal maps inside of either one of those programs, but the problem with it is is uh, if your model is just a ridiculously high resolution, then um, it really chugs in uh, whatever the 3D platform is. So XNormal has a uh, ju just a uh, two-dimensional menu system that doesn't have to load up any type of uh, 3D viewport, so it makes it uh, much more efficient, uh, much faster, not having to deal with that 3D. Um, display. So I took that uh, that lower resolution version of my model and brought it over here into Maya and as we can see it's still pretty dense um, which is fine it gives me all the curves that I need to uh, be able to see for uh, for all my edges uh, when I went to go retopologize it. So this is my retopologized model so it's much uh, much lower in resolution keeps all the the forms uh, the curves of the more complex shape and uh, I have already also unwrapped it so my UV is laid out I have a little bit of space in between each one of my pieces for a little bit of bleed zone um, but it is uh, it's unwrapped it's ready to go so once you have your model unwrapped and uh, once you and have also retopologized your high poly, it's time to bake your normal map. So in order to bake your normal map uh, using XNormal, it's good to have a cage. Now what a cage is is just a duplication of the low poly model um, with the vertices pushed out to surround both the low poly and the high poly model uh, within that area. And what it does um, is it uh, it references the low poly model references the cage in each one of the vertices since they're the exact same topology, um, and with with pulling those vertices further away from the model, it gives um, XNormal a, an idea of where um, it should start trying to bake the detail from uh, by being pulled out a little bit further. Um, so everything that that's encapsulated then, then um, ensures that it's it's baked. If uh, you um, have oh, uh, an area of the cage that um, uh, the high poly is poking through, then you will end up with uh, some errors inside of your normal map, uh, which we really want to avoid. So first, I'm going to take my low poly and I am just going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to add it to a new layer that I have here called cage and then I'm just going to throw a uh, blend shader on it that has this green color just to make it easier to see. Now I'm going to turn on my high resolution model and turn on my cage. So I'll select my cage and go to vertex 
and I'm going to select all my vertices. Now I'll go to my move tool and normally your move tool is set to object but we want to set it to normal. So what that will do is it will pull if I move on the N value uh, of my gizmo, it will push my vertices out at their individual normals. So by doing that, I can uh, encapsulate uh, my entire high poly model uh, inside of my cage. Sometimes you'll have little pieces that poke out here and there, and um, so what you'll want to do is just go and grab vertices around it and pull them a little bit further out just to ensure that they are uh, that the cage is encompassing the entire model. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's um, completely covering my oops, completely covering my high poly model, which is great. So my cage is all ready. So what I need to do now is just export my low poly as an OBJ and I'm just going to save that to my desktop I'll be rock low poly and I'm not going to worry about sending out materials I don't need them in this instance then I'm also going to take my cage select it and export it rock cage So now I have all the files I need from Maya. I already exported my <clears throat> um, my high poly from ZBrush, my low poly I just exported from Maya, and then uh, my cage um, I also just exported from Maya. All right, so now we are going to grab X normal. From X normal, we are going to click on High Definition Mesh. I'm going to clear it out from my last bait. Then you go to File, right click, Add Meshes, and I need my Rock High Poly file. And you need to make sure that both your High Poly and your Low Poly are using the same mesh scale. So I'm going to make this 20. Um, just I, I like having a little bit larger mesh scale size. You can keep it at one, or you can keep it at five, whatever you decide to do. I prefer to up mine a little bit, um, just to ensure that there's enough light rays that can get in there uh, for baking ambient occlusions. Uh, gives them a little bit more space. And again, we go to low definition meshes, right click, add meshes, low poly. And then I'm also going to go back to my file, right click and go to browse external cage file. Then I select my cage. Yep. And XNormal will let you know that they need to be the exact same topology. If they're not, you will get errors. All right, then mesh scale. Again, need to make that 20, ensure that they're the same size. And then under Baking Options, I'm going to select a place to save it. So I'm just going to save it right to the desktop. Let's call it Rock. So then here uh, you can select your size. Uh, you can go all the way up to 32768 if you want. Um, I'm cool with uh, just doing a 2048 by 2048 right now. Your edge padding is how much bleed. Um, that X normal will add in extrapolating uh, the pixel colors at the edges of all your UV shells um, and then pulls those further out. So if you decide you want to um, uh, compress your images a little bit inside of uh, inside of Unity or whatever engine you may be using, um, it just gives a little bit more bleed zone. Um, for bucket size, I like mine set at 512. Um, you can read on XNormal's website about some of the more complex render setups if you want. Um, and then these are all the different maps that we have we can bake from XNormal. Normal maps, height maps, ambient occlusions, <coughs> convexity, cavity. Um, if you paint your model in ZBrush, you can bake the high poly's vertex colors, so you can bake uh, that paint down to a texture. There's a lot of great maps you can do in here. However, in this tutorial, we're just going to go over normal maps. So if you are, uh, if you click on the three little dots here, um, depending on what platform you work in, uh, this Y coordinate is uh, is important. So if you're working inside of Maya or Unity 
then you need to have a plus Y. So what that is is the green channel of your um, of your normal map texture. If you're working in 3D Studio Max or uh, Unreal Engine 4, you need a negative uh, Y. Now, if you bake it and you use the wrong one, you can actually just open it up and open up your texture in Photoshop. Go to your channels, go to your green channel, and invert it, and that will fix it. Uh, but since we're going to Unity, I'm just going to give it a positive Y. And then we just hit Generate. Since we loaded in our cage file, we loaded in our low poly, our high poly, and now um, X normal is going to load all three of those files in and calculate exactly uh, how it can project all that detail from the high poly down onto the low. All right, so here we can see is projecting the detail and we can see that it really pushed all those edges out to give a lot of bleed area um, just in case we needed it. Uh, in between all of our UV shells. So here we have fully baked our normal map. It has projected all the detail from the high resolution down to the low. Now I'm going to pop over here into Unity and I'm going to take my low poly, my low poly uh, rock.obj. I'm going to just drop that into Unity. Now I normally prefer to use FBX uh, models, but Unity will take OBJs. Um, I just always have a lot better <coughs> uh, luck as far as quality with um, with uh, FBX models. All right, so I'm going to right-click, create <coughs> material. It's called a rock, and then I'm going to grab my new normal rock uh, or my rock uh, normals target map and drag it in. Go into Rock, Normals, and drag it right into my normal map slot. And I'm just going to change the color to be gray so it's easier to see. Then just apply it, and as you can see, I have all that nice detail that was in my ZBrush model. Now applied to my low poly. And the low poly you know, is uh, substantially <coughs> um, less dense as far as the geometry goes, uh, but still just has all that great detail. Uh, just from baking our normal map. So um, again, this is a great way uh, to be a bit more efficient, add more detail to your models. Um, and uh, yeah, so in, you know, if, if again, with the, the edge dilation, if we decide we want to crank uh, the size of our normal map down, we can always um, compress it and uh, we, we start to get uh, some of the details blurred but uh, depending on how important the map may be to you uh, it should be absolutely no problem to crank it down like even if I go down to 1024 it's still pretty visible really not bad so yeah I hope this helps your process makes you a little bit more uh, efficient also makes uh, your work a lot um, uh, more detailed and robust, and thanks for watching.